I'm back. I don't know what happened. I can't blame it on the devil. It's probably something to do with the wireless. But anyway, like I was saying, and, and, and two, I came back because someone really needs to hear this word. And sometimes the devil does uh, work in, in electronics. And he can block certain things from happening, from, you know, getting certain messages out. So that's why I decided to uh, go back and uh, come back on again. And I'm going to quickly recap on basically what God had told me and put into my heart for those that are listening right now. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to go into, I'm going to go to two, uh, two scriptures. Uh, one is Genesis in the beginning of the creation. We're going to go to the Valley of Dry Bones. Mm -hmm. Now in creation, the Bible says that uh, after God, on the sixth day after God had created man, he formed and shaped Adam, formed and shaped man from the dust, but he wasn't alive. But also we're going to go over into uh, Ezekiel 37, and it says that uh, God had uh, God had taken Ezekiel down into the valley of dry bones and asked him, couldn't bones live? And so Ezekiel, of course, said, God, you know. And so he told him to prophesy to the bones, and so he did. And the bones came together. There came a shaking of noise, and the bones came together, but still there was no life. But then the scripture said, through Ezekiel said that, Spoke to that valley said that I am going to speak life. I'm going to breathe life into you and you shall live. I am going to speak life into you and you shall live. But also back over into uh, back over into Genesis after God had created Adam, shaped and formed him. The Bible said that he breathed into the nostrils of God of, of the man and he revived and he became a living soul. That word breath, God's breath, God's, uh, God, God's breath is God's wind. God's breath is God's life. God's breath is God's uh, essence. But also God's breath is, is, is God's um, authority. And so what I want to speak to you today, all of you that are in a, a, a seemingly dead place, now that dead place that you may seemingly be in, it may be in your relationship. That dead place that you might be in, you may be in a place where you feel like you're all alone. Depression might be talking to you. Suicidal thoughts might be talking to you. You may be in a place where you feel like you're stuck. You don't know what to do. You don't know what decision to make. You don't want to make the wrong decision. But so now you don't know what to do. But in that place where you don't know what to do, all you also do is to trust in the God. To stand. The uh, there's an old saying that in the absence of a direct word from God, stand still. You need to stand still at that place where you are. You're in between a rock and a hard place. You don't know what to do. Don't do from emotion. Don't move from emotion. But move from God. Let God speak through your heart. And so until God speaks to and through your heart, stand right there and stand still. So in this particular place, dead place, you, your dead place might be your, or your marriage. Your marriage might be at the doorway of divorce court and you're about to walk away from it. You, you felt like you tried everything that you thought you could do. Some of you, you might be even in a dead place. You're hurt. You might be in a hurtful place. You might have loved someone. And so now your, your love is in a dead place. You might have trusted someone. Now your trust is in a dead place. You might have believed in someone. Your belief in that person, it might be in a dead place. Whatever that place that you might be in, even in your body, you might be believing for a healing. You might be every day you wake up, you might be in pain. And in your mind, you're crying out, God, when are you going to take this pain away, God? Well, I know if I suffer for you, I know I reign with you, but God, you said that you will wipe all tears away. And you said that healing is the children's bread. And so God, heal me. Just like you heal that other person. Just like you heal that other person. You said that you're the same yesterday, today, and forever. And so you're at that place right now that you're tired of being sick and tired. You're tired of feel like you're living, uh, you're living uh, uh, beneath your privilege. You're tired of feeling like you someone's uh, doormat. You're tired of uh, selling for sucker bass when God said that you're the head and not the tail. You're a lender and not a borrower. But you look at your situation. You look at your condition. You look what what you have and you say, God, when? You see people that you know that is not living a nick of worth of dog meat, but they seem like they're prospering. But the Bible says to, to fret not yourself because of wicked doers, but soon they will be cut off. The treasures of the wicked is laid up for the just. So so you need to settle down and trust and believe God in your consumably dead situation. I come to tell you that God is going to speak life just like with God when he did with Adam. See, Adam, he was shaped and formed. He had been shaped and formed, but there's no life. And so what did he do? He said that he's breathed into the nostrils of Adam and Adam became living soul. The Bible said that if any man in Christ Jesus, old things have passed away and behold, all things have become new. Now, I come to tell you today, your tomb, just like Lazarus, Lazarus was on the tomb for four days. And in that tomb, in that tomb for four days, it was at a point where he couldn't come back. 
After four days, scientifically, he could not be resurrected. But Jesus stood over his tomb and said, roll it away. And spoke to him, come forth. Many of you, you are in that place right now. Your tomb might be trust. You might have put your trust in a tomb. You might have put your joy in a tomb. You might have put your confidence in a tomb. You might have even put uh, your direction in a tomb. You might have even put your emotions in a tomb. Uh, whatever it is that you once did is in a tomb. And you feel like there's a ceremony that's taking place. It is a place of no return. It's been four days. It stinks by now. It really more than set in. It's stinking. It's decayed now. You might think your situation is decayed. But I come to tell you today as uh, one of God's voices today. And he dropped down and he dropped into my spirit to speak to you today and see you might be depressed you might be living in depression voices might be speaking to you you might even be thinking about suicide see you might be standing in the congregation of suicidal thoughts whatever place and condition you are in I come to tell you today that God said he's speaking life just like what he told them in the valley of dry bone. He said that I'm going to breathe into you life and you shall live. And I come to tell you today, it doesn't matter how bad it is. It doesn't matter how insurmountable it is. You matter about how painful your body might be wrecked. But God said, I'm going to breathe life into you and you shall live. And at the, after the command that God has spoke to me today, live. It's time now to get up. Get up out of that pain. Get up out of that. Shake that depression off. Take that suicidal thoughts off. Shake that pain off and come to the master. But God want you to live in your current situation. Your situation might be bad, but the Bible says that all things work together for good to them that love the Lord and are the call. And the fact that you are the call, God is calling you out of your tomb. God is calling you out of your hurt. God is calling you out of the pain that you're feeling. God is calling you out of the mindset that you're in. For the Bible says that the Spirit of God will cast down every thought and every imagination and bring it into the captivity until the obedience of Christ. God is pulling down those thoughts right now and I come to declare to you today to live. God bless you. Live. 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 Don't die. you die. The, the sickness is not under death. What you're feeling is not under death. See, oftentimes we think that we, we get in a situation it seems like the world is going to end. It seems like it's the last thing. Wow. It's almost like the Spike Lee movie uh, on Malcolm X when uh, Malcolm X was going to go down to that town hall and get that last, uh, that last, uh, that last speech. And, and it was it was setting up because he knew he was going to die. It seemed like man, you you at that place where you're going down that 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 hallway for the last time, and you know it's over. See, but let me tell you something. That's a lie. That's a lie. You can recover. You can recover. You can live. And but you got to believe that you can live. You got to believe that you can be brought out. See, because God is a very present help. In a time of trouble. In other words, God will show up in your trouble. God will show up where you are if you call on him. That's all you got to do. He's waiting on you to call on him. Your change is in your mouth. So you're waiting on God to, to make things happen. But God wants you to open up your mouth and create change. If you want things to happen different in your life, create it. And those people, now you got to read the tea leaves because those people, those situations, those, those pathways that you walk down and it felt like you keep walking on those same pathways and they keep ending up in destruction. The Bible says if you go that way, it says, you know, if you know that way is destruction, the Bible says to avoid it. And so God wants you to avoid what you've been doing and, and it's been a failure. It hadn't worked yet. You done it your way. It hadn't worked yet. It's time to do something different. It's time to try it out God's way. See, you struggle. You fought through it. You tried. You did your best. That's all you got to do, your best. See, but now it's time to let God do it. That's, it's time to let God pick up the pieces. And the way that God can pick up the pieces and say, God, I trust you. God, I'm going to let it go. I'm going to let it go. I'm going to let go of hurt. He hurt me. She hurt me. They hurt me. And I'm going to love. That's your greatest gift, love. When people be mean to you, they treat, treat you bad. Your greatest answer, your greatest response is love. How you carry yourself. Because it's love that's going to it's gonna be your example. It's your love that's going to lead them to Christ. If you're a kind person, in adverse conditions, keep showing kindness. Because if you keep showing kindness, that kindness is going to plant seeds of kindness. If somebody's being mean to you, be nice to them. Because what's going to happen, the more you're nice to them, you're going to plant need, need, uh, seeds of being nice. And it's going to come back. There's going to come up a harvest. Just because there's one harvest, because harvest does end and harvest beginning. One harvest does have an appointment date. But there's another harvest that will come up again. And so while you're in your bad harvest, plant good stuff. Uh, yeah, I know they hurt you. Yeah, I know it was unfair. Yeah, I know it was bad. 
Yeah, I know what it felt. It, it's, it was wrong. But don't let that change you. Don't let what they did to you change who you are. If you're a loving person, stay loving. If you're a kind person, stay kind. Be who you are. Don't change who you are. Because it's in who you are. That's who God created you. You were created and you're fearfully and wonderfully made in his image and his likeness. And never apologize for who you are. Never live beneath your privilege. Never uh, cast your privilege before swine. Never break your back to, to show love to somebody that don't want to show love to you. Be who you are. Be your standard. Carry yourself at a standard. And if people can come up to your standard as far as relationship, cut them out. Cut them out your life. They're not going in the direction you're you, you going in. Make sure that the agreement is when people are agree and going in the same direction. If people in your life are not going in the same direction you're going in, cut them off. Ain't nothing personal. See, but you can't be tied to people that are not going where you're going. See, but what God has put into your heart and what he told you, you're required to fulfill it, not the other person. I'm done. Please share. This word has really helped you and really encouraged you. Please share. Sorry about the earlier video got cut off, but it is what it is. But I'm back now. And But remember, God is speaking life. God is speaking life in your dead situation. It might have been dead, but God is bringing life into it. He's speaking into your tomb right now, and he's pulling out depression. He's pulling out pain. He's pulling out loneliness. And see, and they say the thing about it, and loneliness, speaking of loneliness, there's a season for loneliness. There's a season for being alone. Because when you're alone, that's when the time that you can gather your thoughts. You can settle down. And God can speak to you when you're alone. Just like what God spoke to, uh, God spoke to Jacob. <coughs> he spoke to Jacob alone. Because he thought that he was going to die because he was going to meet his brother. Because he already had to deceive his brother, con his brother out of his birthright. And so now he's going to meet his brother for the, for, for, for the first time in a long time, Esau. And so now he was afraid. But the night before he met him, God encouraged him, but he was alone. The Bible says he was alone and he wrestled with an angel. And two things happened. He changed his walk and he changed his name. He, he, but he left with pain. And see, oftentimes when you're paying situation, it's just the fact that, that you, you've been with God. Direction. Remember that turning place. See, your pain will also be your blessing if you can perceive it and wait for the process of that pain uh, to manifest itself. Hey, God bless you, mother. God bless you, mother. God bless you. Just trying to encourage God's people. He, he's, he's real. He's real. And he can, he, he's, uh, he can deliver you from the utmost. He can deliver you. Don't matter how dope, how low you might be, he can pick you up. Don't matter how much pain you have in your body. He can deliver you because he took it all upon him. And he said, by my stripes, you, you heal. And so the Bible said, according to your faith. And so based on your faith will determine your victory. And based on your faith will determine whether you be brought out or not. And it's based on your relationship with God. Please, please, please share. Please share. Somebody need to hear this word right here. I speak life. God is speaking life. Into your dead situation. Tell me. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Have a good day.